Start the recorded. What's up, everybody? Well, today I'm uh, working on this little tower cutscene thing. Um, so this is kind of uh, what I've got so far this morning. I pixeled this tower, kind of did this scene with some clouds. And so this whole thing is going to parallax. I want the front clouds to move faster than everything, you know, and back clouds to move slower. So it's going to be a scene where it just kind of like scans upward, it goes up and starts at the, looking at the bottom of the tower, goes to the top of the tower, fades in really slowly. It's a cutscene when you're meditating. So that's what I'm working on. First thing I got to do is export this out into separate layers. Okay, I think I'm going to start with this third one here. Let's get these ready to export to like clouds. You can hide this folder. Oh, this is super old. The gray layer I don't need anymore. Put the tower on its own group. All right. Oh, I just ruined the whole thing. Ah, screw it. I didn't really want to animate it just yet. Maybe I'll animate it later. Do some some lightning or something. Okay. So the. Hmm, I wonder what these layers are going to look like because I'm going to have to export them all with the light, probably. Well, let's just find out. There's the background. Oh, and this might as well be called Scene Tower Preview now instead of just BG. Oh right, the t ooh. Each one of these layers is gonna have to be a different size, and the shorter it is, the more motion it has. And yeah. Thanks, Metrius. Which means each one of these layers Thanks, Dieharders. Like these foreground clouds. Let's do this one. Oh, that's crazy because this light. Uh... Wait, can you? No, you can't make a group effect of not just another group. Hmm, I guess I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to duplicate this light layer a bunch. Unless I just wanna like really stack up on these. No, I don't. Yeah, this needs its own light layer. Damn.
Ahoy, salad dogs! How's it going? Oh, you know what's a good idea? Before I go and complicate this whole document, <laughs> I'll just export all these layers with tons of light anyways. Yeah. Just to see if they can get the concept working first. Like, how big should these clouds be, for example? Let's put these all in their own documents. It's going good, man, yeah. Really excited about the whole news and everything. Thanks, Power Up Audio. What you working on today? Okay, so let's get this exported. Backgrounds. See, no, not backgrounds. Scene tower preview. Just delete both those. Performance metrics, frame timing. Cool, man. Nice. How's school going, by the way? Calc two, wow. I remember I remember some of those. I had a calc two and a calc three. I think I only got to calc three. I never finished university. I left because there's no girls in my school. I was like, man. Professional novice, what's up? Oh, that's that you go to like linear. Oh, linear algebra, differential equations. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Soldering, huh? Hating it? Oh. My day's good, man. I've just been doing some pixel art. Working on this this cutscene here where this will parallax. This will take a minute to get all these layers exported so they can be parallaxed. Let's just save this as a ping. First thing I gotta do is dial in all their sizes. Thought I saved you as. Oh, 
Not as a copy. Okay, there's the last one. got our scenes set up. Now we need to get them in different layers. So I'm looking at phase cutscene, which loads all the different sprites from a data file. So I need to, um, right now it just gets to the idle frame and then the BG frame. Just needs to load through a set number of things. Thanks, Bane Games. Like a certain file format for each one of these names and each one of them gets pushed back. Or, okay, it could just use an animation. No, I would want each one to be able to have its own animation. Okay, so each one of the animations needs, or each one of the layers needs its own animation. So, scene sword and scene... Scene tower preview. We're gonna let like name these layers differently. 
This would be layer zero. Or just zero. Animation zero. I guess that works. Hmm. I guess I could give each layer a different speed too. And then I wouldn't have to worry about each one being a different height. I would use move by and a different duration for each one. For now, I keep I'll, I'll keep. I'll do it this other way. Thanks, Galactic Glum. Where does it get this anim from? Okay, so both those things, both the animations in this file. They're not even used outside of right here, so let's put this, let's make this a lot better. So each one of the layers, we load an animation, like we'll have a max number of layers. Ten layers, twenty-one layers. I don't know. Whatever it is, I equals zero. I is less than max layers. So we get the animation. Oh, first we'll need the file name. or the animation name, it's just I. If we don't have the animation, we break. Now we get the first sprite, profile gets sprite frame. And then we delay and also run the animation on the sprite. So we create the sprite, run it, and push it back as one of the sprites. And then now we don't need to do this loading the background sprite because we already did it. And technically, scene sword, we'll need to rename that to zero and that to one. Okay. 
All right, we should be ready to try this. Well, to really messed up all the layers with all that light being exported in every layer. And none of them parallax, of course, because they're not there. Okay. UI hierarchy? What do you mean UI hierarchy and which which OS are you talking about? Alright, so here I'm just trying to get a feel for what it'll look like without the light bleeding onto the background. iOS. Oh, iOS. When you stack layers from different classes, I can't seem to write correct code for changing. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, I hear you. I totally understand that. I remember that. I remember trying to do that kind of stuff. That was, it's tricky, right? It's hard to like conceptualize, visualize where, what layers or what. What's up, PX? Howdy, welcome to the stream today. Okay, so I did that. Oh, also. The, this layer should at least be 540. Uh, ping. How does it copy? What the hell? What the fuck? Mm. Okay, so the background clouds, if I make theirs smaller, they'll scroll faster. I want them to, I want the background clouds to come up. Um, slower. Okay, so these background clouds should be like 550-ish. This one 555. Yeah. In the foreground, 540, 
Mm. I'm agreed on that one. Fades out too soon. Really? Even with all the crazy layers, with all the clouds and everything messed up? Okay, so I don't I don't think that was parallaxing enough. I think maybe I gotta change that change up the parallax and make that move slower. Yeah, it's not enough parallax. Okay, we need more parallax. Yeah, the color scheme, it'll eventually look like this. It'll, let me show you what it actually is meant to look like. It looks like this. So it's like coming out way too bright in the game because I exported the light layer for each one of these layers. So, for the, But the first thing I have to do is determine the height of the image. The, the height determines the parallax amount. So less less height and it parallaxes more. Um, so I'm just trying to dial that in before I go and export every single one of these layers properly to make it look like this. So that's the goal. First thing is that once again the, the height of each layer so it's, it can parallax correctly. Um, so overall it didn't parallax enough. I'm gonna go with double the parallax this time. So it starts off at 560. The next layer will be 550. Okay, I'm definitely thinking more, and that was not enough of a step from the last one, so 
Let's try 20 pixel step this time. 540. What's up, Woos? Hello. Thanks, I think so too. Oh, Mutinous, what's up, man? So I didn't get through the whole podcast yesterday. I only listened to like the first, I listened to the intro and then I listened to each person kind of state their initial thoughts on Steam Direct. So I really don't, I don't know if I can comment just yet. I Maybe I, should, I need to keep watching the whole thing. What about you? Did you did you like take something away from that that you want to share? <clears throat> I guess if I want to if I have some thoughts on Steam Direct myself, um, I think it's great that Steam is trying to solve this problem. What's up, Steve? You know, um. Like something needs to be done about the situation that's on on Steam right now where there's so many low quality games. You know, there's a lot of just games that are just kind of clogging it all up. You know, I, I want there to be more high quality games on Steam because I want to play higher quality games. And I know a lot of other people want that too. So I think it's good that Steam is trying to move in that direction, right? I don't know whether this is, I don't know if this Steam Direct idea is the right idea or not, or what. Oh, that was a good podcast. It was from Total Biscuit. Yeah, a poor effort, right? That's kind of that's kind of the feeling I was getting by listening to those guys, too. Um because I kind of agree with them. If you if they if Steam makes it five grand or whatever, then it is going to put up a barrier. But I don't know. I do you really think if if this if the cost was really high, like even if it was the even like a thousand dollars, there I think there would be a lot less joke and like apps out there that or games on Steam that are like you know lower quality, but. I guess maybe I didn't listen to enough of the podcast to kind of get their thoughts on it. <laughs> right? If it's five grand, you're right. When you put it up at five grand, it kind of is a big barrier to entry that kind of blocks out a lot of indies. A lot of, like, even me. I, I, I don't know how I would have gotten the five grand. I guess I would have had to ask for more from the Kickstarter, and hopefully the Kickstarter would have done $5,000 more. And that's... That's a big, big chunk of my budget as a game developer, you know, being just a, you know, starting off from scratch. Right, yeah, there's definitely merit in all sides. Oh, Salad, that's a really good point. Yeah, it would probably would increase your hesitation, huh? It would definitely increase mine too a little bit. Itch. So what? What's Itch doing? What's up, Arcane? Yeah, see, I wouldn't have had the money. That's what I was just saying. Yeah, I definitely would not have had five thousand dollars, um, just laying around to have you know have even tried with Songbringer. I guess I would have had to. No, yeah, I know, I know Itch, but like, uh, what are what do you mean by Itch? Is this a greater than sign or is this a? I'm moving towards stream. It's not a solvable issue? I guess it is. Oh, that's that's a good point. It's a good point. But like I don't know. If you average everyone's if you average everyone's subjective concepts, will that work? Is that what they're trying to do with green light?
Oh, yeah, yeah. Does, yeah, Arcane, this is a great example, right? Some games that really, that really we don't, a lot of us don't like or whatever. Like, they're, they are going to have the five grand to easily put up the Steam Direct fee. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. A lot of that was happening. A lot of bots were going into green light votes. I wonder about this too. About can you actually objectively know if a game is good or bad? And that's what I was trying to say about averaging everyone's subjective concepts. Yeah. Gosh. I wonder if Steam is actually listening. You know what I mean? I wonder if Steam, somebody at Steam will actually go listen to that podcast. Oh. Here, let me share this link with you. Total Biscuit. If, any, if anybody's um, curious about what we're talking about here. It's a podcast, but they did a they have a YouTube version of it. Hmm. <laughs> it is a cesspool. Why do you say it's still viable? I guess it's still viable if you if you have the right strategies. Right, I think you bring up a pretty interesting point here, Arcane. Oh, you're still making revenue? That's awesome. I was never able to crack revenue on, on making mobile games, but I also wasn't at all good at marketing my own games back then. Now I'm, I think I'm better. Such good questions. It is. It is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for us here too. But yeah, I can imagine in a different economy. Hmm. Hmm. I agree, PX. There's got to be something better than green light where where the community can kind of can influence it somehow. Like just making a dollar cost doesn't doesn't fix it all because it's just money you know like there needs to somehow be the the community somehow needs to genuinely affect it, this outcome i would imagine oh right and it's per game i didn't know that i didn't know it was per game i thought it was a one-time fee like they currently have I think it could parallax even more, man. Hmm. 
Yeah, objectively good. I see your point, Arcane. What's up, Delra? Welcome. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Android is cheap. Right. Right. Arcane, I see what you mean here. And it's like, as a as a person that plays games, you understand this concept. You know, you understand that what you know, objectively good is versus people's general opinion of it. And I think a lot of people understand that too. And I think that if Steam can find a way to like, you know, uh, you know, mark each mark a game as objectively good or not, without being too subjective about it. Of course, that's the objectively part. Delra, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> the Grim Gary. Yes, it's a Steam Direct debate. You've walked into a Steam Direct debate. Oh, all right, man. We'll see you. PX, I like this too, right? You're talking about curation. If they just increase their curation, well. Hmm. <laughs> That's what you want. Robot buggy. Dismiss whining about green light as whining. Oh, you mean just accept green light the way it is? Kinda? Or maybe improve green light? Somehow? Hmm. That's an interesting point. We're starting to get a bit of parallax. That's cool. And then just a fade out duration. And the initial delay. We should be fade out.
Oh wait, this is still faded. Right? Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Most of my favorites are indie games, too. Yeah, big important point there that you can sell more expensive games on Steam than you can on mobile. Maybe, maybe it's like on consoles, only the best, only the best games get onto them. Right? Yeah. If you're going to pay for that, for that huge fee, it might as well be some curation or moderation. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's a it's a good start. So I guess I'll export all these as different documents. So here's the main one. We can just save that. And then I'll save as for each one of these. Wow, this layer's this is eight megs. It's a good point. I know these guys, Robot and Kitty. We did a game jam together. Yeah, they're all right there. Look at their sales for Legend of Dungeon. I think is what he's saying. Like they made like they made some good amount of cash off their game. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm and if I duplicate this Yeah, it's a megabyte. Ah, uh, 
It's going to be super hard to keep straight if I don't. Oh yeah, I guess I could just delete all the other layers. Okay, so they, each one of these doesn't have to be a whole eight megs. So I don't have to worry about it. Kill that. Save as. Scene tower preview zero. This thing will be the full height and we don't need any of this. You do, you totally do, because those things are so expensive. It's like a $10,000 thing just to have a booth at one of those, at least. All right, scene tower preview one. It's going to be It is. It's a huge risk. That's the biggest that's the biggest thing that the five thousand dollar thing doesn't take into account is that developing a game is it's sometimes like a freaking roulette wheel. You have no idea whether a game is gonna make zero and in in other words you just lost a lot of money because you spent so much money trying to make your game and so many great games just fail like that where they just flop. Huh. So tower preview two is going to be four eighty.
Not necessarily, if it's not a good game. Oh yeah, that's right. They did talk about it being recoupable. Exactly, Steve. That's what I was trying to say. Indies discount their time and underestimate how much time or overestimate their speed. That's the thing I need to admit myself. This is probably one of my biggest flaws. It's, it's holding me back even now is like I, I always estimate that I can do things four times as fast as I think I can, which is to say that I always think I can get things done in a quarter the amount of time because I think I'm some great developer or something like that, but not really. Things always take four times as long as I think. So, but it all starts from me thinking that I should be faster. I don't know. The psychology of being an indie. Thanks, Pixel 6. Hmm. Three is it five That's what that was. Four is four forty. Which is just the last clouds layer. Yeah.
Random H? What's that? Hmm. The spaceship wizard with the triangle bombs is going to cause you stress cancer. I'm sorry, man. Don't. Stay with us. Stay with us. Don't get cancer, man. Oh, that's a little bat or a um, butterfly. Um, or a little mini TIE fighter, if you want to... I think that maybe it's that. There he is. He's on the left side of the screen right now. That was good. Making it last a little longer. I think maybe a little longer actually would be good. So let's try 24 this time. And then the fade in is like a good 20. And I, I'll, <laughs> let's hope I don't crash the stream here, but I'm gonna try opening Ableton. Sometimes it doesn't, it messes everything up because I wanna work on that sound effect. We still good? Can you guys still hear me? It's an Illuminati symbol. <laughs> uh. Um, la 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 la. Oh, that's good. Okay, cool. It looks like this stream's all right. I think it needs maybe one more now. And they should really crescendo. 110. Nice. Yay. Illuminati confirmed. We've got it. Oh, circumstantial. I mean, Non-circumstantial evidence. Whatever that kind of evidence is called. I don't watch court shows. <laughs> More tinfoil. You need tinfoil. Yes. Oh, Grim Gary, do you want some tips on fighting that uh, boss? The triangle bomb wizard chick? I'll give you some tips if you want. I won't ruin anything. I'll just give you some, some good items that you, you should probably have to beat her. Yes, you do? Okay. All right. Items to get to fight her. Um, biggest and most important item you need is the shield actually yeah arcane's got a great tip here that actually is really cr critical if you use the blink to jump over her um her lightning spirals and um try and dodge any of her lightning that really helps <laughs> for a lot of running and screaming <laughs> yeah um get this shield make sure you have the shield if you already have the shield um, another thing that really helps, two items, are the glove, which allows you to use your sword a lot faster, and the chip, which doubles your sword damage, um, because those things will just help you rock her really fast, because it's hard to hit her with bombs. Bombs are really hard to pull off with her. Um, so it's kind of like you have to use your sword or your top hat. If you, have the fr if you have the ice top hat, that can help. You can slow her down a little bit. There you go. That should that's those some of those things should help. Something in there should help. Oh, also having a flask, a full flask is really great. You have the fully upgraded shield. You have all those items. 
What about flasks? Do you have any flasks? Oh, and I'll need to like make this sound cooler. There's something not, there's this, oh yeah, let's do this right now. I want this to be bigger sounding. Look at the overall volume here. Oh, right, yeah. So just go back to the store and refill that. Cause you'll need that, man. The flask is so helpful for fighting bosses. Um, and another tip for using the flask is um, it refills up to one extra heart. So if you actually drink the flask and take a little bit of damage, it's okay because it will actually refill a little bit more of your health. So like if you take a, if you use your flask when you're on like two teeth, then it'll that's a good way to do it because you're probably going to take about one tooth of damage while it's filling up. And then you're using it to its biggest potential. But yeah, you can totally refill the flasks at the store that you bought, you, that you got the, the flask from the first time or the, the flask spirits. Negative four. Negative four. Okay, yeah, that can be at least three decibels louder. A sketch of how he looks. No, I do not. I do not have any sketches of what his face would look like up close, but I do have in mind another poster type thing. Um, so I am going to draw something else. I'll eventually be drawing his face, like what he actually looks like. Yeah. It's a pretty cool poster idea. I think uh, I can't wait to do it, but there's more important things to be done at this point. So this should be at least three decibels. Oh, well, well, we have a lot of potential here. We can at least put an EQ and a spectrum on this. There's no effects at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't. Yep, that's kind of the point. You, you're meant to transition there at that point of the game into a phase where it's just, it's a different, it's a different gameplay at that point where Jib is not there to get you items anymore. Um, you can still get items from pillars. So if you like go attack some pillars and stuff like that, you can, you can find items in there. And, um, there's still, of course, on, when you're on the overworld, there's still the items there. Oh, Grim Gary, sorry about this, but the version you're playing right now, um, doesn't have boss portals yet. Right now there's boss portals, man. I am about to get this release out. I'd probably buy like... Tomorrow, no, like, is it Friday? Yeah, I have to get this release out by tomorrow. So by tomorrow night, this will be online. Let me show you what the boss portals are like. These are sweet. This will save you so much time. So there's a, now, once you've been to the boss, there's a portal that goes back to the boss before, the, to the before boss room. So you don't have to go through the whole dungeon again. And that way, you can start the dungeon out with full health. And then if you die, and also another nice thing is that it remembers your health, so I'm experimenting that with that this time. Um, where let me show you what these boss portals look like. But yeah, it remembers your health too. So if you start a dungeon with full health and you die, you start the dungeon again with full health. You start the dungeon with whatever health you had. So like, um, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me add some hit points to this current save file. So let's say my hit hit points were at twenty. I would start with more teeth, right? So it always remembers your teeth. Yeah, it definitely will spare some frustration. I don't want, I realized that playing Link's Awakening and Oracle of Ages, 
Actually, it was playing Link's Awakening last month, that's right. That some things are just stupid frustrating, you know, and, and they're just time consuming. And I don't want to have those kind of things in the game. So, dying fighting bosses is one of those things. You almost are always going to die fighting a boss, so that's why there's these, these boss portals. So they allow you to go to the before boss room or from the before boss room. It looks like Jib's, Jib's animation is all messed up there. Maybe because he's got his mustache right now. fun yeah it definitely will yeah that will be retroactive totally oh what happened here we crashed we crashed on exit why did you crash on exit something didn't get released or something I don't know yeah so it'll be retroactive the second you boot up the new game it will have it will have all of your old stuff um, but the, the, there's a change with the new version in that the overworlds are all different. So the overworld, the location of everything on the overworld will have changed in the new version. Um, but the good news is you'll still have all your exact items. All of your progress in the game will be still be there. It's just that everything is sh kind of like shuffled on the overworld now. So, but yeah, the second you boot up this game, this new version or whatever, it'll have a boss portal. Even if you've even if you've already been to that boss in a different dungeon before, it'll have a boss portal now to there. So it just remembers. And if as long as you've been to the before boss room, it will now have a boss portal to the before boss room or whatever. <clears throat> oh wait, let's make keep making this beefier, sound stronger. Oh, it needs a compressor too. Yeah, so that'll help, especially with fighting bosses like the, the lightning boss. It's, it's pretty hard. There's a more difficult dungeon coming up, though. The last dungeon. a bit too much reverb. Maybe just the size. Mm. Oh, that's kind of cool actually with a ton of like that and I guess it could have what would it look sound like with a ton of feedback what? doesn't sound any louder whoa cool 
Okay, that's not a good way to pump up the volume here. All the amps are already up. Intensity. Oh, wait, maybe it's just low. Oh, there we go. So if we turn. What do I want here? Mix. No. It's a parallel series. How do I get just the other? Uh. Having trouble with this. You want some more low, huh? It's a good point. This says it might not have enough low. That's what we need here. Oh so, uh, yeah, that's a good thing to check, right? I should be looking at the EQ before I look at all the other stuff. Yeah, it's already hitting it pretty good, but here we could get a spike. At 33, that would be nice to see. 33, do like a nine decibel tight. Maybe another one. And then another one at, it's off the charts, but we'll just do 20. 30 is the lowest it can go, I guess. Hmm. Oh, I know what to do. Okay, it just needs it needs two notes. It needs two of these. This one will be like a sub. This one will be the. Let's call this one the tom. This is almost like a tom. And this one will be the bass or whatever. And so this one will do a totally different um, effect. I want to do it kind of like a boo, like a, like a kick drum. I've got one of these. My kick. It's called my kick, maybe my 808. No, my dirty south might be this one. It's kind of cool. Not loud enough. Wait, oh, it is kind of loud already. Okay, just clipped a little, just turn the bolt down a little.
Okay, well, that's just zero. We're going. I need to see this in the game. Let's see if that's possible. This is the base. Yeah, see, this has a lot of 20, man. Negative 12 is pretty loud. Yeah, this is this is great. This is gonna get you some dread feeling. I'm not listening to this with the sub right now, but I know for a fact that if you go if I go above in my experience mixing and mastering, if I go above negative twelve, it's gonna be way too much bass. Um negative twenty four is a pretty good bass level already, and this is hitting this is hitting twenty hertz at over twenty negative twenty four. So this is pretty loud. I guess I could try and spike it a little more though at the very end. The 20. Let's see if we can get a little spike. I don't know if this is possible or not. Unless maybe like that. Oh, that's, that's definitely giving it more. Whoa, did you hear that? Is anybody listening with the sub right now? Did I really just hit it? Yeah, it does. It does add a nice little element. Maybe if the whole thing was down. There, now it's now it's behaving. Now we've got that nice bass and it's still above below negative twelve. And that's here with the whole sound. Huh, this is, looks, looks, looks pretty uh, informative. I'm going to check this one out. Okay, let's just see. First of all, see how it's, see how it's going. So far. Thanks, Galaxy 5000. Oh, and then I think after that it's gonna be dinner time. Oh, wrong place. Well, it was obviously too short and still too quiet. Why is it too quiet? Oh, wait. Oh, my sound in the game is half volume. So that's why it sounded kind of quiet. Okay, but it's definitely too short. I need to like two or three more.
also I didn't even hear it we didn't even hear the, this one the last time because I didn't rebuild fmod I gotta rebuild the fmod project that means are you exporting in the correct correct place are you assets good assets now we can just rebuild this asset thingy oh I'm hungry I'm hungry I gotta get some food Hopefully now it's the right sound. It's fading in so slowly now. I may I might need to add a little bit of less fade. Oh, that was cool actually. So the floating Raymeek, I don't know about that floating Raymeek thing. What? Just clipped out at the end there. Well, anyways, this has come a long ways, this little tower scene thing. Still got a little ways to go, but by the end of tonight, I should be able to have this scene done. And then tomorrow I'll need to like work on bugs all day and then get this release out tomorrow night. So I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. Yeah, you too, Grim Gary. Have a good night, everybody else. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. Hope you all have a great time. It's Friday. Enjoy your Friday or Saturday or whatever it is for you. We'll see you all next time. It'll probably be Sunday-ish that I'll stream next. So we'll see you then. Later, everybody.